All right. So, uh, so Andre's gone. It's just you and me now, Paulo. Oh. I think. Oh. Okay. And uh, I'm wondering who Fnatic will bring other than Naiden and Todd. I don't know who else they have, to be honest. Maybe Rain. Mm, yeah, Rain. Yeah, Rain should still be on Fnatic, huh? And then who yeah. is SDS? I actually have no idea. Who is Korea Pros? I think they I had. Um, I don't know. They. I, I, um, I just read something on Ghost of Gamers yesterday, where they got new Academy Fnatic Korean players. But they released their old Korean players, like Skid, who was pretty good. Huh. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I'm a little bit more familiar with uh, with Todd and with Night End, and they're guys that we're almost certainly going to be see, or, or that we'll almost certainly be seeing in the, uh, I guess, the, the later games. I have no idea who this Korea pros is, um, and yeah. Yeah, I'm eager to see. What he's got going, he's a Zerg player, so we do get to see some Zerg action. That makes me a little bit happy. Yep. Mers is a pretty good Terran. Uh, used to be the fastest Terran ever until APM got nerfed, and now he <laughs> has pretty normal APM. But before it was like 400, 400 APM, now it's at like 130 or something like that. Um, that's, still that's relatively still really fast. fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you read well, his big long blog please. on uh, Team Liquid about being a pro gamer? No. It was pretty awesome. He yes. wrote like he wrote like literally a ten thousand word essay on his life as a programmer. Wow. That's pretty sweet. I will yeah. uh, check it out. Is it new? Is it old? Uh, it's maybe a month old. Oh, that's pretty so new. Yeah, I'll check it out. Yeah. Newish, but uh, we do have uh, Korea uh -oh. pros representing Night In, the Red Zerg Wait. player spawning up. Wait, what? what, what are we waiting United? for? Representing Fnatic. Say? Oh, okay. That's sorry, sorry. I, don't... I, I hung out with Nighten at the Home Story Cup, and <laughs> he's just so fun. memorable. So whenever I think about Fnatic now, I think about Nighten. Yeah, for uh, sure. So Korea Pro is representing Fnatic in the top right. He's the Red Zerg, and of course, Murs uh, top left as the Blue Terran player. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, what map is this? Is this one of the new ladder maps? I'm not I sure. Was... I'm getting a lot of sound from somewhere. Hold up. It's like okay. cutting out production. Do you hear that? There's a lot of sound, like cutting in and out. I'm not sure how the stream is getting in. Is it good? Yeah. I've got no extra strange sounds for what it's worth, cats. Okay, go ahead, Ben. Carry on. Okay. Um. Yeah, I was, I was just, I'm not sure that I recognize this map. This is, uh, this looks like a community made map. Um, this is one of the new NASL maps that they've been using. It's, it's pretty nice. Um, they got the X-ray thingy. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it's pretty nice. All the, all the NASL maps are pretty nice. Yeah, they're definitely community made. But, uh, for the most part, they're better than what Blizzard makes. Yeah, it's a pretty and, map. Uh, it looks like it's definitely trying to push players towards a more macro uh, sort of a play style. Though in these positions, I gotta say that push distance across that top lane does not look that terribly long. And uh, I can see maybe this middle third base being a point of contention later on in the game. But yeah, beyond that, point. looks pretty good. Gas opening first here from Murs. You think he's just gonna go with some Hellions? Uh, I think so. I mean, uh, yeah, it'd be pretty standard. Korea Pros is gonna go ahead and. Uh steal the gas and yeah like you were saying i think the distance here is deceivingly could be a little bit deceiving this looks like a micro map but this this position is called for a lot of aggression early on i think the, the rush distance seems pretty short yeah um and it just in, in tvz in general uh especially lately uh the matchup has been s it's so much about getting hellions out for map control early on and and for me personally, cats, I've been having issues dealing with it. What do you, what do you think uh, Korea pros can do, and what, what do you think is the best way to deal with these kinds of reactor hellion openings that we're seeing out of MERS? Um, well, there could be a few ways. You could open roaches and, and not overcommit to them. You could just make a few of them, or you could uh, 
Or you could just drop a spine and, and make up make a few queens, uh, maybe three or four even. Um, uh, like the, like the late, not, like, yeah. You mean I, like I the am late getting, gas I'm down? sorry, getting really, really, really high sound. I think it's coming from you. I'm not sure. Like every time greens shoot, I'm looking at and it's like. Blah, 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 blah. Huh. I don't know, mate. Everything sounds pretty normal to me. Um. I don't know where it would be coming from. Okay, thank you. I'll fix it in the break. So, uh, yeah, let's carry on, Ben. I'm sorry about that. It's just really distracting. No, I believe me, I know. Uh, so, uh, we do have the speed opening from Korea Pros. He's also got the single spine crawler down. No third queen just yet. Um, yeah, so I, I, I think he's playing a little bit risky here. He doesn't even have the creep connecting that tiny spot. You know, there, there's a but there's a spot in the creep where he could have dropped that first creep tumor that would do the exact same thing he's doing, but it would also connect the upper the upper thingy. Mm -hmm. You know what yes. I'm saying? If, if you put yes. it a little bit more to the right, it, it would help connect both bases. Yeah, uh, right at the bottom of the ramp. So, uh, oh. Like to see Merce run in. I mean, there's absolutely nothing that Korea Pros could do here. If Merce had to run in. Uh, so he's he's playing very risky. He doesn't have a, a queen block in the ramp. He doesn't have an extra queen anywhere. Speed is not even done. He barely has four lanes. Yeah, and it's funny because Korea Pros is not. Uh, he's not really reacting. To, there's not a second spine crawler, but he's still just making more drones. So these uh, these early Hellions not really bothering him. We do see a second reactor factory in the base of Murris. Will that Overlord spot it? Uh, he sees the second reactor and he does, so he knows that it's just a yep. huge, huge Hellion opening coming out of Murris. Uh, yeah, and Baby um, Nest actually going, going down. Now. I really question that move. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, and Korea Pros was really playing risky, but like, it, it's not about reacting. I think he was just playing risky. Like, you know, like, he yeah. kind of has the option of whether moving in or risking a little bit of ball or not moving in. Yeah, kind of yeah we've a ton of Hellions getting in there. Ugh. And it uh, looks like these Hellions are just going to be cooking as many drones as they possibly can. Uh, Pro is doing a reasonably good job of keeping a lot of his workers alive, though. Honestly, he only lost five workers in that whole exchange yeah. somehow. I'm really amazed. Yeah, no. Yeah, not, not really the best control there from, from Mertz, and he also suicided a couple of Hellions while all, the, all, all of that was going on um, at the front of uh, the Korean circuit here. So, the, yeah, that wasn't very good for Mertz. Yeah, so Mertz is just continuing to pump out more Hellions. Uh, his eBay is going up right now. Uh, Layer just now starting for Korea Pros. I'm still pretty blown away that he managed to get through that with only five workers lost. Uh, it did, did hit a pretty hard supply block under all that pressure. He's got six overlords about to pop out now. Uh, but once those overlords start to spawn, he's gonna. I mean, he's gonna be he's gonna be adding a lot more drones, and I, I it looks like he's just gonna play standard mutilink. Um, which is kind of not choice, uh, seeing that many Hellions out at the, at the beginning. But I mean, he's he's he is or he should be far ahead enough right now, after stopping that with minimal losses that. He should be able to do whatever. I'm, I'm really not liking his play too much, though, or, or his decision making. It's it's a little bit questionable just going middling Bailey after this. Yeah, it's almost like he sat down and he said, "This is what I'm going to do this game." And he's he's rather than seeing something and, and adjusting, he's just going with <laughs> going with that original game plan. Uh, he has been able to make it work so far, though, and and, and this front looks very impenetrable. There's two spine crawlers there, a queen, a couple lings and banelings behind. So Merce is not going to be able to run past again. Yeah, yeah, that's going to be really tough for Merce. And uh, what I do like about Korea Pro's uh, play right now is that he has more of the additional banelings. He has them ready in case anything goes on. And uh, just now driving the spire. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a later spire than maybe. Uh, we're used to seeing with two base mutalisk play. Uh, as soon as it pops, we'll probably see eight to ten mutas. And uh, what do you think? Will Korea Pros double expand behind the mutas? I think he definitely needs to. Um, he has been contained for a while by the Hellions. I, I, I really think that even making a few roaches after seeing double reactor Hellion would have been the right choice. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it's, it, it was more than likely that that uh, 
Mertz was gonna go mech after this. Now he didn't, of course, so this is gonna play a little bit to Korea for his favor since he is just gonna stay on lane mid of the failing. But uh, I don't think a few rushes would have hurt him at all. It would have helped him expand right now. Yeah, uh, I do agree. We do have seven mutas starting up here for Korea Pros. Mur is actually going to take a third base faster than the Zerg player. Uh, and we can see this kind of macro reflected in the supplies right now. 100 supply for our Terran player, only 90 for the Zerg. Not often that we see games unfolding quite like this. Yeah, but again, the sad part is... Again, like, Merz is the one who didn't do a lot with his attack. He did a risky strat, didn't do a lot, and they still had in supply, you know, like... It's not it's not a, a turns and balance kind of thing. It's just uh, just Korea Pro is not, not not really reacting appropriately. Now it's down yeah. to this meters. If they can't do a lot of damage, if they cannot do a lot of damage. You know, in trouble. Ooh, he's gonna go after this tech lab. Stim's already done though. That's the combat shields being researched. Uh, Marines are in a decent position to turn these meters around, and Mers is already looking very very well positioned as we move into the uh, later stages of the mid game. Yeah. Even, even the, the, the macro hatch is a little bit late as well, but uh, at least his drone saturation is getting there and now taking a third. I would like to see, as you mentioned before, him take another base now. Yeah, uh, he does catch a couple of these transferring SCVs, but Murr is probably not going to mind that so much. He's sitting on 50 SCVs right now and he's got triple orbital, so uh, his income is absolutely uh, excellent. Uh, actually yeah. outmining the Zerg player in just about every every way. Absolutely. I, I love the fact that he's dropping a planetary fortress at, at his third too and not getting too greedy. He's He knows that he's a little bit ahead right now. And, and there's the, 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 the fourth deck. Good turret placement, keeping those mutas from uh, from really finding openings or from doing any significant damage. Oh, mutas flying over those marines there. We got a we got a big blob of red stuff moving through the middle of the map. Those are Lings and Bane Lings, and it looks like Korea Pros is gearing up for a big attack. There's no siege tanks in Merz's army, and this could be a little bit of a problem for him. Yeah, that's, that that could be a huge problem. There's there's a, there's three tanks back at home. He really should start spreading them and, and covering a little bit more ground with them. They're not even sieged. Uh, they don't even have siege actually. Oh my God, he forgot siege. Oh no. Uh, and doesn't seem to realize it uh, yet. He's he's producing siege tanks two at a time with no siege mode. Yeah. And if if he pushes out without that and gets and gets uh, flanked by a bunch of lings and banelings, he'll lose his whole army. Yep. That's uh, that's really unfortunate. Oh, still not realizing it. He's even getting weapons upgrades for his mech or for his uh, for his tanks and hellions. And yeah. still no siege mode. He's got to see it sooner or later. I mean, he will when he can siege for sure. Yeah. And uh, I'm just hoping he somehow realizes it before that. But that should be his obvious cue. Like right now, if he tries to, you know, I, I don't think he's tried to siege yet. But he would know it. You know, like he's right now he's moving. Things, so as soon as he tries to siege something, he will be like, oh crap, and just click oh, that man. siege. Click S really hard. Now the no. Zerg player has no way of knowing that siege mode has been forgotten, but this there. is... <laughs> when he saw the mutas there, he should be sieging right now. He should be sieging something. So right now we should expect him to go back soon and start siege any second here. There we go. Yeah. He's going back now. So I'm sure he tried to siege there. And now... Oh god, he's gonna... And we, we've got a bit of a lag spike and we can see on the mini-map that the, that the Lings and the Banelings are already set up in a big flanking position. This is gonna be terrible for Murrow's cats. Yeah, it's, it really is. Um, I mean, it's not the greatest attack for the Zerg unless there's no siege tanks, you know, and, and there literally are just tanks which are bad against every unit the Zerg has right now without siege. So, yeah, it's going to be pretty hard for Merce here, even if he gets like a perfect split. He doesn't even have a lot of room for that. Yeah, uh, and with the mutas on top, you know, those marines when they're running in circles trying to split up those mutas are just doing basically unanswered damage. Uh, I, I don't I don't see this ending well for our Terran player. Yeah, definitely. It's, um, that's unfortunate. Um, it, it's pretty unfortunate. I mean, Merce, Merce's attack at the start kind of failed and, and he didn't really get punished for it and then he got ahead and he made some good decisions to expand and, and whatnot. But then he forgot siege. I mean, yeah, it's kind of a bus kill. And 
No name finally does drop. So here we go. Uh, is Korea Probes going to go for this attack? Doesn't look like he has that many Banelings in this army. And actually, no, the Zerg player not recognizing his opportunity to strike. If Merz gets back home, if Merz starts siege mode, come on, Merz. There yeah. it is. Siege mode just now starting up. Yeah, and the, and the Zerg again had like kind of had to assume that you know, yeah, Merz had siege mode. <laughs> so uh, that's good. Yeah, M missing an opportunity, but one that uh, that probably a lot of Zerg players would have also missed. Yeah, definitely. And now Merz is also m almost maxed. As soon as he gets on, he's gonna hit a, a pretty strong timing. And actually, that fake sort of. Uh, uh, Muta's poking forward, trying to pick away at this third base Marine. Stem and run down, and don't pick anything off. But uh, what Korea Pros does achieve there is forcing that army of Murs to move, uh, pulling them out of position a little bit. I would love to have seen some Zergling uh, aggression at the at the natural at the same time, but uh, but uh, it looks like Korea Pros is just trying to keep Murs on his toes, keep him from attacking, and buy time to let that higher tech and and, uh, and the greater Zerg numbers really hit the map. Yeah, um, Murs, however, does have a, a pretty nice wall at his natural, though, so that that may not have done a lot of damage. This is something that every turn does against Zerg now. Um, at least on the Korea server, everyone does, and, and most of the top tier North American and Europeans do it as well. It's incredibly effective and, and just shuts down wing run base. But um, yeah, I mean, and th this is this is a pretty even game now. It's pretty tense. No one wants to really commit or move anywhere. Uh, yeah, uh, plus two attack finishing up for our mutas. Uh, plus two carapace and investor energy also on the way. Uh, still no hive for Korea Pros. That's something that you're going to want to get going pretty soon. Oh, Muta's going to fly in and commit to an attack. They're going to pick up all these Marines easily. Uh, I think only losing a single Mutalisk. Uh, Murs takes this as his cue to go attack. Uh, yeah, he did bring back a few Marines and went for one with the rest. I don't like... Uh, he needs to start sieging a little bit earlier, I feel like. He's, he's kind of clumped up so much. Like, that could have been really dangerous. Sieging right at the edge of the creep of the Zerg and, and just, you know, like... It's scary. Yep, big three-pronged attack being set up by the Zerg player. He's going to come from every angle. Mutas from the back and Lynx and Bayman's from either side. Uh, Merz has Looks most like of his tanks sieged. Oh. This is really tense. I'm kind of wondering. I guess Kree Pros is waiting for these 32 Lynx to pop out. Mutas down to 14, though. That's that's like at least at least the clump on the battle. It's and here we go, Bayman's and Zerglings coming in from both sides. The Mutas a little bit late to the fight, but they do finally manage to get in there. Murs does a good job of avoiding the worst of the Bayman detonation. You see Korea Pros even burrowing in the midst of that, but Murs is too smart, drops the scan, and all of a sudden this Terran push looking deadly. Yeah, that was pretty cute, the Murr was. Uh, one thing that every every Zerg needs to do before attacking like that is morph a bunch of Banelings and just have them waiting, like, uh, for, for the, for, like, just in case the attack fails. Um, that attack mainly failed though, Ben, because the, the Zerg, I think, had been dwindling his Muta numbers, like, over and over again. He, like, he, he had been losing Mutas throughout the entire game for no good reason. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I do agree. Uh, and now Murs, man, basically tightening the choke hold he has on the Zerg player. He's all the way up to the edge of the natural one more time. Green Pros tries to push out with a lot of Zerg and Banelings, but, uh, the army of Murs is just, is just too, is too big. Yep. Um, it's gonna be it's gonna be pretty tough. There's an investor out. out. A couple big fungals could maybe buy the time necessary for this greater spire tech to get the field. I have to feel like the uh, the hive could do it much faster than it was as well. Yeah. Now there's the seed line that I like. It's, it's pretty spread out. I like the green spread. Um. Uh, Man, he was just going down there. everywhere. I think Korea Pros is doing a great job of hanging in there, but uh, the way he en uh, engaged everything initially just kind of put him in a, an un a pretty unwinnable position. Yeah, it's pretty hard. Um, uh, I'm not... Yeah. Yeah. Murs does pick off this third base. Uh, to Korea Pros' credit, he's got expansions all down the right side of the map. 
Uh, Murs seems to be aware of this, though. We see a little bit of a Marine hit squad moving in that direction. Uh, still rallying units towards the natural of the Zerg player is Murs. So uh, that army just getting bigger and bigger while Korea Pro's supply continues to dwindle. Only 140 supply against 172. Almost all the mutas are dead now. Yeah, Murs being really patient right now. I really like his play. He, 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 all, all he has to worry about is that Murs are going to go out. Aside from that, he can be as patient as he wants. Very yeah. nice fungal there. Yeah, beautiful fungal, nice banning detonations, but it's just not enough. Korea Pros realizes it taps out. GG. First game between uh, Fnatic and Dignitas will go to uh, go to go to Dignitas. So the next question: Who's up for Fnatic?